Hey everybody, welcome to our tutorial series on using your Crazy Talk assets in your Unity game. Uh, in this series, uh, we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to show you how to create animations in Crazy Talk Animator for your side-scrolling games, and then we're going to export those animations to Unity and uh, kind of get them working and functioning in Unity. And then we're going to be using Crazy Talk 7 to kind of bring up a, uh, a dialogue character. Um, so for example, I'm having this character walk around. This is all Crazy Talk animations done here. Uh, all done in Crazy Talk Animator, rather. I can see the idle motion. I have my other character there behind the counter. And then if I pop up to the counter... Oh, yeah. Who's getting some? Me. You can see my character, will tr it'll trigger a uh, dialogue. The character will pop up. Oh, yeah. Who's getting some? Me. He'll, uh, he'll say his piece right there to the girl behind the counter. So that's basically what we're going to be covering in this tutorial series. All right, so the first thing we want to do here is we want to get a character in Crazy Talk Animator 2 animated, and we're going to export him to our Unity uh, game project later on. So let's add an actor into our scene. Let's go to the Actor tab and go to, uh, whoops, Character, not Body, and I'm going to choose our boy Saul right here. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on Saul, and let's give him a little bit of customization. I'm going to go to the Character Composer. Now, in the Character Composer, you can do all sorts of customization. I'm just going to do a simple haircut to Saul. I'm going to select the head tab here. I'm going to select our hair folder. And in this G2 uh, character composer um, uh, content pack that's available on our content store, I'm going to find um, a suitable hair. Maybe this one will do. This looks a little bit neater. And give this hippie a haircut. And you can see the color automatically adjusts to Saul's uh, predefined color. Now, because this is going to be a side scrolling kind of uh, game scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Saul and I'm going to Click on this uh, tool right here to rotate him to the right. We've got to make sure everything looks okay from the right. Maybe his ear could be above the hair instead of behind the hair. Let's take uh, his he ear there, select that, and select send to front. Now you see his he ear will pop in front of the hair. Still looks a little strange since he has no sideburns, but maybe that's just his style. So let's go ahead and go back to the stage here. And let's rotate Saul to the right. Uh, to the 90 degree angle using the bracket keys on your keyboard. So there's 45 and there's 90. And then what I'm going to do is apply an animation to him. So we'll go to animation and motion and 3D motion and there's an idle folder in here. I'm just going to choose a regular male idle. Uh, I believe that's down here. There we go. Normal male. So just select that idle and you see Saul will pop into his idle there and it'll go for quite a long time. I'm going to press the stop button and press F3 to open our timeline. And then I'm going to open up the 3D motion track. And let's see exactly how far this animation goes. You can see it's about a 660 frame idle. So that's quite long, um, especially if we're going to be putting this onto a sprite sheet. So let's go ahead and try to uh, shorten that up a little bit. Uh, to do this, I'm going to just zoom into my timeline by clicking and dragging the uh, scrub up here. And let's make it to about, uh, I'm going to play back here. Yeah, I'd say about 50 frames will be okay. So I'm going to select uh, right click in the uh, clip right here and break it. And then I'm going to select this clip on the right and delete it. And let's take a look at this one. We have this uh, shortened idle clip. If I have loop toggled on, I can just click and drag on the edge here and loop it and see what happens. You can see he kind of jerks into uh, the beginning section of the first clip. And that's not what we want. We want a smooth loopable motion. So I'm going to control Z and undo that. And to fix this, I'm going to create my own loopable motion. Uh, so I'm going to right click on the second uh, frame right here, uh, break it, break this clip and move this one over a little bit. And then I'm going to select this first one again, right click and copy it. And then I'm going to paste it over here at about frame 60, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to put these two back into place right there. And I'm going to slide this one to the end of the second clip. Now let's take a look. You can see there's still a jerking motion from one frame to the other, but now we have the option for this transition area. So I'm going to click and drag this transition area about to about frame 39 or so there. And let's take a look at the transition now. So you can see it's a lot smoother. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control click all of these clips together and right click and flatten motion clip. And now we have a single motion clip. And let's test out the looping. So I'm going to select the end of this one here and click and drag it. And let's play back and see. You can see the looping is a lot smoother now. It's no more, uh, you know, jerking into place. So that looks just fine. Let's Control Z and undo that. And now I'm going to go to export all this stuff. 
So let's uh, go to the timeline here and we'll go to our export tool. And I want to export an image sequence. So I'm going to go to the image tab up here and the format needs to be PNG because this is a transparent format. And for frame size, output size, I'm going to deselect lock ratio and I'm going to select uh, 500 output size uh, for both the X and Y axis and that looks fine. Now keep in mind here that if you're creating multiple motions like we are in this tutorial, you want your character to be the same size within the frame. Now the reason for this is because when you're in your game, if you switch from an idle to a run and your character suddenly changes size, it'll look a little bit strange. So let's go ahead and keep an output size of 500. It's a little bit large, I know, but uh, we'll just keep this for now. And that should be fine right there. Make sure he's centered in your frame uh, relatively. And what I want to do is select a range here. Now we do not want to export 1 to 2000, obviously. That's way too many frames. So I'm going to press F3, go into my timeline, and then take this little red triangle here, and I'm going to click and drag it all the way down. And you can see it appear in the timeline there on the top. And let's move it to right there. And that'll be uh, frame 1 to frame 54. And that's the range that we want to export. And we'll just close down the timeline and move down here. And all these options are okay. We don't need to worry about those. Let's just press export image. And I'm going to go into my folder that I have saved on my desktop here called game demo. And in this folder, I have a folder called animations. Now I'm going to create another folder here. And this one's going to be called idle. I'm just going to keep all my animations in the same folder. So idle. And then when we're in the idle folder, we'll just call the animation idle as well. And this is going to create a series of PNG images. Uh, otherwise known as an image sequence, and we're going to export this to a sprite sheet. You can see they all look fairly similar right now, um, but they are actually just slightly different, but we can't see the difference right now. Let's go on to the next animation where we will be able to see quite a large difference. So I'm going to right click Saul, remove all the animation from him, and then we're going to go to the content manager and animation, motion 3D. This time we're going to go to move. And here I'm going to select a happy run. And I'm going to double click that. You can see he'll uh, face forward. We can just go back to frame one, use the right bracket key, and face him sideways again. Now this one's a lot shorter, so I'm going to play that back. You can see it's just two steps. And this is already uh, perfectly looped because this is the um, way the motion comes in Crazy Talk Animator. So this will be a bit faster. Let's just press F3. We can click and drag this um, project length down to here. And now we're at... Uh, I think 26 frames or so, and we'll just close that down. You can do all sorts of modifications to this uh, character within Crazy Talk Animator. Um, if you want to learn how to do uh, more character modifications to the animations and stuff like that, uh, I recommend you check out those tutorials on our YouTube channel. Um, but right now we're just going to export this, and the options will remain the same. We make sure we have 500 output size. Also make sure that our character is staying within the frame. You can see his head's coming pretty close to the top of the... Uh, um, export area there. You can maybe even move him down a slight bit as well. Let's take a look. There we go. So everything looks okay. I think the size is relatively the same. So let's go ahead and export this 1 to 26 and again PNG uh, sequence. Export it and let's create another folder called run. And let's export the run to the run folder. There we go. So we're just going to export these images right there. And now you can see the difference in all of these uh, in this image sequence right here. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Let's close out of here. And so now we're pretty much done with Crazy Talk Animator. So let's go ahead and close Animator down. We don't need to save it. And I'm going to load up Texture Packer. And this is where we're going to put all of our uh, image sequences into a sprite sheet. So let's double click on uh, Texture Packer here. I'm going to select the Unity uh, Texture 2D Sprite Sheet plugin here and create project. Now Texture Packer is a really great program for creating sprite sheets um, and, and cutting up uh, image sequences. Um, I, I'd venture to say that it's actually even better than the built-in Unity one in many cases. Um, I'm going to show you a very easy way to export your image sequences to your Unity project using this Texture Packer. Now at this point we're going to want to do a couple of things. We're going to want to start our Unity project right now just so we have the folders available for our assets. So I'm going to alt tab over to Unity right here. I'm going to go File, uh, New Project. We're going to create a new, new folder just for this uh, game demo here, or this game project. So we'll call this Game Tutorial. 
And because it's 2D, I want to set the defaults for 2D. So we'll just select 2D right here and then go ahead and create. And I don't need to save this current project. So this is going to launch a new project. And in Unity, we'll just close this down. And we have our uh, main camera right here. You can see that it's set for orthographic just as uh, any 2D game uh, needs to be. And another thing I want to do here is I want to go to my Explorer and I want to, or rather my uh, Google Chrome here, and I want to install this Texture Packer Importer. This is a plugin for Unity. So I'm going to select Open in Unity and I just launch application. And this is going to be an easier way. This basically allows uh, everything you export from Texture Packer is going to be updated live in your Unity scene. So for example, if I decide to make a change to my sprite sheet in the same folder and I make a change to that, it's going to update automatically within my Unity project. So here we are loaded up. Let's just go ahead and import that. And I'm going to import it right now. It's going to import directly into my Unity project. And you can see it's importing all the assets and scripts right here. All right, so once that's finished, let's just uh, close this down right here. Go back into our Unity project. You can see now we have the codeandweb.com uh, folder right here. And that's just fine. We'll talk more about that later. But for now, what I want to do is go back into Texture Packer. And I want to make sure that in the data and texture sections right here, I have my assets folder selected in my Unity project. So let's go back actually into the Unity project and let's create a new folder. And let's call this folder animations. And that's just fine. And then we'll go back into texture packer. And what I'm going to do is make sure that I have this uh, file selector and this file selector following the path of that folder that I just created. So to do that, I'm going to open it up and let's go to desktop. Uh, I have it saved in my documents folder. Yours may be a little bit different, but generally this should be okay. And I have a uh, folder should be called game tutorial. There we go. And in game tutorial, we have assets and in assets. We have animations and just go ahead and save. Oh, we want to save it as an idle. Sorry. Uh, we'll just call this animations. That's fine. Um, so this is going to have both our idle and our, and our running animation on the same sprite sheet. So let's go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the texture section. So we'll go to desktop, or rather documents, and game tutorial, and assets, and animations. And we'll just call this animations. We're only going to have two animations, the idle and the run. So make sure you save that. And I'm just going to go ahead now and add a smart folder. Now this basically is a cool feature. I'm going to go to my uh, desktop, where's my game folder here, game demo folder, animations. I'm going to add this folder, which contains, as you recall, the idle and run animations, but I'm just going to add the animations folder. And we'll see what happens when I do this. I'm going to select folder, and it's going to com combine all of the sprite sheets in that, fo in that folder um, into a single sprite sheet. Now you can see it's not really big enough to contain uh, both of those uh, image sequences. So let's go ahead and make a couple of adjustments here. I'm going to go to the max size 4096, and we can just choose 4096 here as well. Um, for the size constraints, I'll just choose any size and it'll kind of uh, crop it off a little bit. Now in your game, you'll probably want to um, conserve as much resources as possible. So you'll want to have the minimum amount of extra space on your sprite sheet. Uh, for algorithm here, I'm going to go to basic. And here we have them separated, but we need to sort them by name. As you can recall, we have one named idle, one named uh, run. Let's take a look at what happens when we sort them by name. Uh, ascending. Let's take a look. We have idle 1, idle 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is the way that you need to export them into Unity. And you can export them all on the same sprite sheet. That's just fine. Now make sure that you have trim mode set to crop and keep position. And your pivot point normally should be the center. And what I want to do now is actually just go ahead and publish the sprite sheet. And this will publish directly um, to my Unity project. So let's go ahead and take a look at our Unity project now. And you can see now it's live updating in our Unity project. It's going to be exporting all of these, uh, this sprite sheet rather, to the animations folder. Let's take a look. So now we have in the animations folder, we have that Unity file. And we also have all of our animations here already cut up and ready to go in our sprite sheet. So that's basically the first step for exporting your uh, sprite sheets to Unity and we're going to stop this tutorial right there. In the next tutorial, we're going to I'm going to show you how to import those sprite sheets into your scene and create some animations and uh, do some scripting to have your characters move around the scene. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two.